Uh, and as the two, the two towers, towers are, are gone, gone, so it's got there's. A, is this okay. the third building now in New York? This yeah. is the third building. We, I, we don't know. This is a, this is the, 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 the some of the problems of technology. Go ahead. That's right. I'm standing here right now just off Broadway by City Hall with Michael Hess, who is the city's corporation counsel. Mr. Hess, you were trapped in, I believe, Seven World Trade Center. Go ahead, sir. Yes, I was. I was up in the emergency management center on the 23rd floor, and when all the power went out in the building, uh, another gentleman and I walked down to the 8th floor where there was an explosion, and we've been trapped on the 8th floor with smoke, thick smoke, all around us for about an hour and a half. But the New York Fire Department, as terrific as they are, just came and got us out. We're going to bring more of those to you now. Barry Jennings, you're on the 8th floor. You work for the City Housing Department. Explain to me the moment of impact. Well, me and Mr. Hesch, the Corporation Council, were on the 23rd floor. I told them we got to get, get out of here. We started walking down the stairs. We made it to the 8th floor. Big explosion. Blew us back into the 8th floor. After getting to the 8th floor, everything was dark. It was dark and it was very, very hot. Very hot. Um, I asked Mr. Hess to test the phones as I took a fire extinguisher and broke out the windows. Once I broke out the windows, I could see outside below me, I saw uh, police cars on fire, buses on fire. Uh, I looked one way, the building was there. I looked the other way, it was gone. The firefighters came, they came to the window and they because I was going to come out on the fire hose. I didn't want to stay there any longer. It was too hot. I was going to come out on the fire hose. They came to the window and they said, they started yelling, do not do that. It won't hold you. And then they ran away. See, I didn't know what was going on. That's when one, the first tower fell. When they started running, the first tower was coming down. I had, no, I had no way of knowing that. Then I saw them come back. Now I saw them come back with more concern on their faces. And then they ran away again. The second tower fell. So w w as they turned and ran the second time, the guy said, don't worry, we'll be back for you. And they did come back. This time they came back with 10 firefighters. Um, and they kept asking, where are you? We don't know where you are. I said, I'm on the north side of the building because when I was on the stairs, I saw north side. All this time, I'm hearing explosions. And I'm thinking that maybe it's the... Uh, Buses around me that was on fire, the cars are on fire. I don't see no, you know, but I'm still hearing these explosions. When they finally got to us and they took us down to what, what they, they uh, called the lobby, because I asked them, I said, when we got down there, I said, where are we? He said, this was the lobby. And I said, you got to be kidding me. It was total ruins. He was there and he was crying and there was another gentleman crying and, and for help. We couldn't get to him. We tried to get through the, uh, we, we went through the buildings. We were lost. Both staircases, the, the back side was completely blown away. There was no way to access us. We couldn't get to him. And finally, uh, one, of the, one of the fire department teams found him. But uh, we, didn't think, we didn't think they were going to make it. We were watching the building actually because it was on fire. The, uh, the bottom floor of so the, the building were on fire and... Uh, you know, we heard this this sound that sounded like a clap of thunder. Oh, boy. Keep your eye on that building as it's coming down. Turned around, we were shocked to see that the building was, uh, uh, well, it looked like there was um, a shock wave uh, ripping through the building and the windows all uh, busted out. And, you know, it was, it was horrifying.
then, uh, you know, about a second later, the bottom floor caves out, and uh, the building followed after that, and um, we saw the building crash down all the way to the ground. Um, you know, we were in shock, and then, uh, then the, the worst part about it, we saw the, the smoke and the plumes of smoke coming out. It's amazing. A, a amazing, incredible, pick your word. For the third time today, it's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. When I saw, it was a classic implosion. The center of the core, the penthouse area, starts to move first, and then the building follows along with it. World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires fueled by office furnishings. It did not collapse from explosives or from fuel oil fires. An examination of the building's steel beams and columns could have shown whether explosives had been used to slice them but virtually all of the steel was removed before it could be properly investigated, then put on ships to Asia to be melted down. I know 9-11 was an inside job. The police know it's an inside job, and the firemen know it too. But you have not heard this on the nightly news. Uh, and as the two, the two towers, towers are, are gone, gone, so it's got, there's a, is this okay. a third building now in New York? This yeah. is the third building. We, I, we don't know. This is, a, this is the, 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 some of the problems of technology. Can you believe what you have been seeing on CNN today, ladies and gentlemen? Can you believe it? <laughs> Supposedly, a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden, took a television camera crew with him, went into Osama bin Laden's hideout, interviewed him and his top leadership, his top lieutenants and colonels and generals in their hideout. This is a CNN reporter with a camera crew. And he came out and told everybody, within three weeks, Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel. Now, don't you think that's kind of strange, folks? You see, because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world, with the biggest budget in the history of the world, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years, and can't find him. A reporter from CNN and his little camera crew got in to Osama bin Laden's secret hideout and conducted an interview. If you don't believe me, tune in to CNN. They're probably running it right now as I'm speaking. And if you believe it, you are one of the stupidest jerks that ever lived on the face of this earth. And whatever is going to happen that they're going to blame on Osama bin Laden, don't you even believe it. When in hell are all you people going to wake up?
the United States is conducting for the benefit of all nations a program it calls Plowshare. The basic task in developing Plowshare excavation technology is to answer this question. In order to produce a large crater with specific dimensions in a specific earth formation, what size explosive is required and how deeply should it be buried? This close-up view was taken from a ground station three miles from ground zero. The dome rose to a height of 290 feet before it vented at three seconds. Commanding officer of the battalion combat team gives the signal for the advance toward the BCT objective, an area approximately one half mile from ground zero. From ground zero. From ground zero. Judgment, God is calling. Underneath the war pigs crawling. In the coming hours and days, my administration will keep the American people fully informed. Benghazi, Benghazi.